So the ATF is facing another major loss in the Texas case challenging the ATF's new rule on frames and receivers. So let's talk about this. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Kershaw Knives. Kershaw manufactures close to a million knives in their U.S. factory every single year and employs roughly 400 people within the U.S. Kershaw produces a broad range of knives to meet every single person's needs, from a $20 knife that you can find at Walmart all the way to a $200 U.S.-made automatic knife, Kershaw has your needs covered. So I highly recommend you check out Kershaw Knives. I carry one of their knives every single day for my EDC. And right now, if you go to their website and use the code SCHOLAR20, you can get 20% off of your order that's site-wide, plus free shipping on orders over $100. That offer will last all the way until December 1st. So go check them out. Check out You know what, And thank you again, Kershaw, for sponsoring this video. How's it going, everyone? My name is Anthony Miranda. I am a licensed and practicing civil rights attorney in the state of California with an emphasis on Second Amendment rights. I've been part of Second Amendment litigation both at a state level and a national level while serving as a staff attorney with the Farms Policy Coalition legal team. My goal with these videos is not to provide any legal advice, but instead to give you greater insight into the inner workings of Second Amendment litigation and also what is currently going on in the battle for our rights to keep and bear arms. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we'll be discussing how the ATF is now set to suffer another significant loss in the Texas case challenging the ATF's new rule on frames and receivers. The case we'll be talking about in this video is Vanderstock v. Garland. This lawsuit was filed in the Northern District of Texas against the ATF and their new rule on frames and receivers, which went into effect in August. This whole lawsuit arose out of the ATF's creation of a new rule regulating unfinished frames and receivers. This new rule by the ATF is essentially a restriction on the sale of 80% kits. Under this new rule, the 80%er kits are treated to actually be firearms. In this case, Vanderstock, the plaintiff sued the ATF and are seeking the federal court here in this case to find that this new rule is invalid under the Second Amendment. In their lawsuit, the plaintiffs also request a preliminary injunction from the court to enjoin, i.e. to halt the enforcement of this ATF new rule on frames and receivers, and essentially to stop the enforcement of this new rule while this case is making its way through the process. On review, federal court judge Reed O'Connor granted a limited preliminary injunction against the ATF. In reaching his decision, he stated, the ATF's new definition of frame or receiver is facially unlawful. The issue here, he states, is whether ATF may still regulate a component as a frame or receiver, even after the ATF determines that the component in question is not a frame or receiver at the time of evaluation. Congress has not extended the ATF's authority so far, he stated, that a firearm part is designed to be, or may one day become a frame or receiver, does not change the fact that in that moment, it is not the frame or receiver of any such weapon. So the judge looking at the ATF's new rule on frames and receivers found that it's facially invalid under the plain text of the statute and that Congress did not grant the ATF authority to regulate these types of items. So he granted a limited preliminary injunction in favor of one of the plaintiff's tactical machining. The plaintiffs argued that the injunction should be expanded to protect the customers of tactical machining and also members of FPC, including other manufacturers like 80% Arms. Judge O'Connor reviewed those requests and those arguments and issued his order, granting the expansion in part, but also denied the expansion in part as well. He expanded the injunction to protect the individual named plaintiffs and also the customers of tactical machining. However, he denied the expansion to protect the Firearms Policy Coalition and its members. And as a result, he also denied the injunction protection on uh, members of FPC, which included companies like Blackhawk Manufacturing. Subsequent to the denial of that preliminary injunction expansion, Blackhawk Manufacturing sought to intervene in this case as an actual named plaintiff. Well, the court issued its decision and found that the 80% arms Blackhawk Manufacturing should be allowed to intervene in this case and become a named plaintiff. And as soon as 80% arms was added into this case as a new plaintiff, they filed for a motion for a preliminary injunction to prevent the ATF from enforcing their new rule on frames and receivers against this company, 80% arms, and their customers as well. And in response to the ATF's opposition, Blackhawk Manufacturing just filed their reply. And in it, they argued that the ATF has no basis to argue that they could not receive the same type of protections that this court has already granted to tactical machining. 80% Arms states, the court has already recognized the existential threat that the final rule poses to Blackhawk. In evaluating the potential prejudice to Blackhawk, if the intervention was denied, the court concluded, Blackhawk alleges, and the court accepts at this stage, that it will likely be forced out of business within a few months. The court also concluded, indeed, absent expanded injunctive relief, Blackhawk's cognizable property interest may not only be impeded, 
it will likely dissolve entirely. So their Blackhawk manufacturing is pointing out that the court has already recognized that they will suffer irreparable harm if the ATF is permitted to continue their regulation over the company and their customers as well. They go on to state that Blackhawk has been forced to discontinue selling key products out of fear of criminal liability and has experienced a sharp decline in sales as its now fearful and confused customers are hesitant to continue purchasing Blackhawk's products. These facts fall squarely within the Fifth Circuit's definition of irreparable harm or irreparable injury, which exists where the potential economic loss is so great as to threaten the existence of the movement's business. Then they point out that one of the ATF's main arguments against granting Blackhawk a preliminary injunction is that 80% arms Blackhawk manufacturing here is in fact an FFL and they can avoid going out of business by simply complying with the ATF's new final rule on frames and receivers. So the ATF's best argument to the court is that Blackhawk just needs to simply bend the knee and comply with this new rule on frames and receivers and everything will be okay. In response to this, Blackhawk points out that the ATF is ignoring the fact that the company's entire business model was built on direct to consumer sales. Before this final rule went into effect, Blackhawk Manufacturing was able to actually sell these products directly to consumers. However, under this final rule, there are new regulations and restrictions where there has to be serialization of these kits and also an FFL has to run a background check. This process is drastically different from what the business was built on and what they could do prior, which is simply ship the product to the people once they order them. Then they point out that the ATF is outright lying to the court about what type of relief 80% Arms is actually seeking. The ETF claimed that 80% Arms wants the injunction to be expanded to the point where they can sell to criminals. And that of course is an outright lie. And for those reasons, Blackhawk seeks for the court to also grant their company and customers a preliminary injunction, which will protect them from the ATF's actions under the new frames and receivers rule. Now, actually something interesting happened as I was filming this video, I was getting some texts and the uh, ATF is going to appeal the Judge O'Connor prior decision on the granting of the preliminary injunction in favor of tactical machining. They are appealing that initial grant by the judge and also they are appealing the clarification, the expansion of the scope to where tactical machining was also given protection for its customers. So the ATF is appealing both of those. I have the appeal order right here. I'll link it down below if you guys want it. Essentially it's just saying, take notice that the defendants here, Merrick Garland, in its official capacity as Attorney General in the United States, Stephen Dottelbach, a director of the ATF, uh, US Department of Justice, and the ATF hereby appeal the United States Court of Appeals, Fifth Circuit, from the court's opinion and order on plenary injunction entered September 2nd, 2022. And then they are also appealing the expansion and the clarification that was issued on October 1st. So the ATF is going to appeal this, how this is going to impact what 80% Arms is currently trying to do 80% arms is essentially trying to play on the back of that initial preliminary injunction that was granted. So it will impact that as well. Um, so the ATF is trying to appeal that determination. They are trying to appeal the granting of that preliminary injunction. So now this is going to go to the fifth circuit and the fifth circuit will have to decide whether or not they agree with the ATF or do they agree with the lower court here that the ATF's new rule on frames receivers does in fact violate the second amendment. So I just wanted to update you guys. I wanted this video to be more comprehensive, especially since we got this as I was filming this video. So now you kind of know everything that's happening in this case as it stands right now. Now, before I end this video, I want to get you guys' help with something. Every year my family does a pumpkin carving contest and every year we have a single winner. I figured I would use you guys. So here's a picture of the pumpkins we carved. Comment down below which one you think is the best. You can vote for the witch, the cat, the owl, or the scary face. Let me know which one you guys think is the best and you guys will actually help decide who gets bragging rights for the next year. Also, if you guys like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to feel the algorithm or feel algorithm rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys directly impact these videos impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation is built by armed scholars and the station will be maintained by armed scholars.